A leg vise normally has the leg as the base of the vise, but in a Moravian workbench, the leg vise has a separate base that the main screw nut will mount to. My first goal is to cut and laminate five layers of plywood for this base. The base has a built-in tenon in the main rails of the bench, and I have cut a small mortise in the top of the leg in episode five, Grave Design Error, as well as a mortise into the underside of the top itself, which was done in episode six, Gluing Up the Top, part one. There is no real measurement rules or best practices from history that I know of for the base, so I decided on 12 by 25 inches, including the tenons, for my final size. I want to be sure to keep away from the upper center of my layers so that when I drill my hole for the vise screw I won't have embedded screws that interfere. I was running a bit low on plywood. I was close to having enough but I didn't want to buy another whole sheet just for two layers. Since the vise screw pressure will be across the full five layers I decided to piece together two of the inside layers of the base. Uh, that's not going to fit in the mortise. Why don't you try cutting off the corner of that base so it'll fit? This will fit a lot better for sure. Now I have three points of contact to hold this base firmly. Am I the only woodworker that ends up injuring themselves by way of pure accidental means like this? I get more slivers, abrasions, little cuts and pinches than I can count. It's amazing that I can't seem to go more than a few hours worth of work before dinging something. I do thank the Lord that I still have all of my fingers. In the 80s, we had woodshop class. I still remember the horrifying videos they showed us on VHS of various injuries that could happen on the larger power tools. I do think I'm mentally scarred to this day. <laughs> In all seriousness, I do take my power tool safety seriously. I try to remind myself each time I get ready to turn on one of them. Hey, pay attention. Be careful. Hopefully, using safe practices will keep myself from being injured. Now that the vice base is complete and extremely solid, I can start to work on the vise jaw itself. It is nine and a quarter wide and 27 inches tall. Two layers on either side are shorter and will be cut away to lose some weight. I also added a couple of inches in height to the vise jaw to be later trimmed off and planed for an exact fit. I used a piece of cardboard and cut out one side with the profile I want. I then flip it over to mirror the other side without having to try to replicate it. A little trip to the bandsaw will trim away the excess plywood.
The old brace and bit will be used to drill the main vise screw hole. I didn't have any bits over one inch that had the length to get through five layers of plywood. I could have used my Forstner bit, but I would have to very accurately lay out all my lines on both sides to ensure the hole would meet up in the middle. I did end up doing just that on the vise jaw, but it's a little narrower and I could run that on the drill press. It also doesn't need to be as accurate because the vise screw mounts right on the vise jaw and you can adjust it if you need to. This Stabila torpedo level is just the thing to make sure that my hole has been accurately drilled. I keep telling my good friend PV that he needs to get rid of that old four foot wood level that looks like a dog's hind leg and get himself a decent level like my Stabila set. I would think you could build much faster if your windows are straight and things like that. Attaching the vice knot on the back side of the base is as simple as running in a set of quarter inch by three and a quarter inch Tapcon flathead screws. They will work great. I did end up having to shim that right side a bit. It seems that the nut itself is just off perpendicular from the casting. I'm going to give this vice jaw a 45 degree bevel to make the jaw a bit less stubby. I want to be able to use my tools at a dropped angle if need be. Unfortunately, my 10 inch sliding miter does not make it all the way through the piece before bottoming out. A little sawzall and planing to clean it all up. Marking out and chiseling away the center of the bottom of the vice jaw will make a slot that the pin board can mount in. A pin board, or some other engineered means, needs to be used in conjunction with a leg vise to keep the vise from racking and binding when clamping up wider pieces. This is what I love about speed squares. They do so much more on the job site than just help you draw a line.
For the corresponding slot in the vise base, I mark out the 4 inch pin board and use my circular saw to help clear most of the waste. Then it's just using the chisel to finish it out. I had to saw from both sides in order to get enough depth of cut to make a clear pass. If you notice, I have a throwaway wrench to shim out the right side of that vice nut. This wrench is one of those throwaway wrenches that get included in some put it together yourself type purchase. This pin board has holes drilled through it in a pattern that allows one half inch increments for the full length of the vise screw. This pattern allows for a maximum of a quarter inch variance across the 23 inch height of the top of the vise jaw and the bottom.
Well, it's finished. Eight feet long, 30 inches wide, 36 inches tall, and 465 pounds. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.